I'm Rod Weatherby. I'm Dave Noel, and you're watching Nutshell.tv. So today we're doing another Ask Science. Ask Science! We're going to be talking about explosions, um, but you need to describe what Ask Science is. Oh, yes! Ask Science is a little thing that I found on Reddit. Basically, it's a little section where people ask questions and people from the Reddit community can actually answer them. Sometimes the answers are a little hinky and sometimes they're spot on. What we're going to do is we're actually just going to answer the questions from the best of our well-oiled brain ability. Yes, well-oiled brain, oil. brain oil. Uh, so today's question, somebody had asked, uh, would a nuclear missile be just as destructive in a vacuum? I'm presuming the explosion of the nuclear missile, would that be as destructive in a vacuum as it is in our atmosphere? Uh, apparently, no, because the bulk of the destruction from a nuclear blast comes from the initial shock wave. And cavitation, what's cavitation? Cavitation, that's when all of the air is actually blown out of the surrounding area, creating a vacuum. It creates a vacuum. Yeah, and then all of that air actually crushes back in into that vacuum that was just made. And it, it creates this secondary shock wave that kind of blasts in and then blasts out again and then blasts okay, in. Okay, so you, to get this we'll destruction that, uh, that you want from a nuclear blast, you need the atmosphere. Uh, in a vacuum, the energy of the blast would uh, dissipate rapidly. Um, yeah, because you don't have the weight of all of Earth's atmosphere pushing back in on it once it happens. So it just goes out it goes in every out direction. After a kilometer, it would be half as, uh, half as strong. After two kilometers, a quarter, and presumably it would uh, go down Yeah, it goes down. It goes, the explosion would take on a spherical shape. It would kind of blast out, and you would follow the inverse square law. So after three kilometers, it's one-ninth of its original intensity and that sort of thing. So that's all fine and good, but what happens if you're in outer space and a nuclear blast goes off near you? So you might not get that initial shock wave and vacuum, but what about the radiation? Well, the radiation would actually cook you alive depending on how close you are. I mean, if you're within a couple of kilometers, yeah, you're in for some, you know, uh, weenie roasts. If you go a little further than that, it's actually going to be uh, a little less intense. But, you know, you'd have to get at least 50 to 100 miles away before anything gets, like, super safe for you. And even then, you'd have to hide on, you know, the dark side of the moon or something and just cower. But you probably would die because you're in the vacuum of space and all of your bodily fluids would evaporate very quickly. And I, th I think the good news is, is that you'll never be in outer space next to a nuclear explosion. Well, I don't know. SpaceX... I want to add one more thing here. Oh, I wouldn't want to say it. Nuclear yields are actually pretty different, you know, depending on what you're trying to blow up. So if you were close enough to have not all your skin roasted off your body, but close enough to really get a good dose of uh, gamma rays, you also run the risk of blowing out all your electronics. So, you would not be able to listen to the Bee Gees while you slowly die from radiation poisoning, sadly. Your, your spaceship wouldn't work anymore. Yeah. You mean? Yeah, well, presumably the Bee Gees wouldn't be alive in your spaceship. Okay. They would be entertaining you on some sort of an There's MP3 device. There's only one device. of them left. Oh, man. Sorry. The Love Bee Gees. The Bee Gees. The BG. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dave Noel. I'm Rod Weatherby. And you're watching Nutshell.tv.